Hey, so my name is Chris, and today I'm going to try and quickly explain how to manage diabetes in patients. Some things I'm going to be going over today is how to manage and provide short and long acting insulins. One, what an insulin to carb ratio is, and how to use that to make sure that you're prescribing the right amount of short acting insulin. If you already know this and the video is not for you, but if you're a medical student on their current AI or another third year, um, this could be beneficial in understanding how physicians are prescribing insulins on the floor. This is only one of the ways to prescribe insulins, so there are other ways as well. But for this, uh, for this portion, I'm just going to explain the way that I was taught. So you have your general chart, which has your insulin and has your time. And insulin is always released at a basal level and then increases in response to high levels of glucose, usually around meal times, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So to understand how to prescribe insulins first, you have to know that there's two different ways that insulin is released from the body. One is a general basal level, and the other one is a prandial portion after meals. This insulin level is going to be covered by your long-acting insulins. We can call this glargine. Your insulin that is response to meals is going to be covered by your short acting insulins. And this is the first portion on how to properly prescribe on the floor. So your long acting insulins are trying to mimic what the pancreas releases on a basal level. This is suggested to be at a one unit per hour from the pancreas just in general. So you're going to want to give one of these long acting insulins that lasts for 24, 36 hours. Um, at a one unit per hour ratio or 24 units of it in general. So glargine 24 unit is a perfectly fine basal dose to give at nine o'clock at night. Step one. Step two is you're now short acting. How much are you going to prescribe for lispo, aspart, or glulysine right before or during meals? So this you have to understand with what type of diet is your patient currently um, ordered on. Are they going to be on a regular diet? Are they going to be on an 88-220? These are all important. You need to figure out which diet they're on because the diet will determine the amount of carbs they get during a day. For example, on a regular diet, this is 75 carbs per meal equating to 225 carbs a day. Your 88-220 though has 100 carbs per diet, 100 carbs per meal which means you're going to be getting 300. And this is important when you're trying to calculate this person's insulin to carb ratio. And you don't know how many carbs they're taking in unless you know which type of diet they're on. So that's kind of what we're focusing on first. Now a general person, just general normal person, nothing special, can have an I to C ratio, let's say one to 10. Okay, so on the floor this patient has a one to 10 ratio now, how much insulin are you going to want to give short acting after or for each meal? Each meal is going to be 75, right? So what do you want to draw up? Right. So 1 to 10, and they're doing 75 carbs. So you're going to definitely want to give them 7.5 is the exact number. Now, this is not ideal because when you're actually drawing that amount up, either you, doctor, nurse, whoever's providing care, this really only comes in like a two, line four, line six, line. So when you're looking at the, the, the clicker for it, I mean, 7.5 is not a really good number. Seven is an okay number, I guess, but eight would be like a perfectly fine number to put down or six as well because at that point, you're kind of understanding, okay, it's really easy to see. So, I mean, either way it comes down to it, you kind of know how much they're gonna be given, and that's for every single meal. And then you're gonna to assess to see if they were adequately controlling their glucose levels, because you're gonna do your finger sticks right here, right here, right here. Measuring your finger sticks is important. I mean, you're gonna have a QHS finger stick as well right here, just to really track how their, how their finger sticks are going. So, that's roughly, how you're prescribing insulins, and now I'm gonna go a little bit into the insulin and carb ratio. So going back to the insulin and carb ratio, you go, okay, the number of carbs over insulin. 
Now, it's important to understand that this is only prandial insulin. It does not include your basal level that you're giving. So you're gonna to wanna to dis disregard that 24 units of glar glargine that we were providing and really only look at how much insulin we were giving like in general. So if we were giving 20 units of insulin, right? If So if we were giving 20 units of insulin for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, this would be 60 total. Not counting the 24 that you would give up guardian at night, but this would be 60. And if they were on that 225 regular diet, then their insulin to carb ratio would be 1.375. And now if you change their prandial to go down to, 10, to only 10 units, then their number would go down to 1 to 1.75. And if you increased theirs to um, 90 total, so you gave 30 units after every single meal, then you'd be looking at a ratio of 1.25. And it's important to put this in the chart to know like kind of what the insulin to carb ratio was for that patient um, so that you're able to track and see if you're ad adequately controlling with the short acting insulins for the amount of carbs that they're getting per day. And so those are the main steps that you're gonna wanna understand about how to do an insulin to carb ratio. And then finally, writing it up. You're gonna write their diagnosis, like which would be DM2 uh, with hyperglycemia. And then you're gonna to wanna to talk about their basal level and their prandials and how they are working. And you know if their prandial is working as if their glucose is able to go back down and our range that we want is between 140 and 180, which is important. The second thing that we're gonna to wanna to check is their basal level. How is their basal level, is their basal, is their, are they adequately basalized with insulin? And this is important, and what I think has been told to me is that you take their QHS insulin and compare it to their AM, oh sorry, QHS volt, uh, finger stick, and compare it to their AM finger stick, and if it is down by 40 points, then they are adequately being basalized. If they are not down by 40 points from night to the morning, then you have to wonder, are they not adequately basalized or did they eat snacks during nighttime? And that's the only way you're actually gonna get an increase in these, is that the patient snuck in a half roast beef sandwich, patient had a cranberry juice or a milk, you're gonna get this increase. So that will tell you if you're adequately basalized and your prandials will be if they're adequately controlled between the 140 and 180 range. Don't overdo their basal, don't go over that one unit, so 24 is sufficient of glargine or deglutig, and your prandials you're gonna assess by looking at their, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap this pen for the 15th time, their insulin to carb ratio, you're gonna write down here, insulin to carb ratio currently um, at a like one to six ratio. And then you say, suggesting to decrease ratio down to like one to 7.5 uh, will assess. And you obviously do that by putting less short actings for each meal. Um, this is just a really brief overview about one of the ways that you can manage insulin during patients during their hospital stay. Um, if you have comments or suggestions or questions, you can leave them out in the comment section below. Thanks.